Good morning, and welcome to Saturday Sanctuary. We have Don Schmidt, the book kahuna, with us. Good and morning. Lori Shin, the everyday shaman. Say good morning, everybody. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Oh, massively creating co creative coaching today, Lori. So, sorry I introduced you incorrectly. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so this morning we're going to talk about something near and dear to all of our hearts, and we really want you to ask us questions if you're involved in this and you're kind of a little stuck. We're going to talk to you about how to find your why, how to find your gifts and share them with the world because a lot of people may have a business that they'd like to get into doing what we do but they don't know what their gifts are. We were talking about that this week on the Empower Hour which I highly recommend to everybody. It's a free three hour this week, a three tr free training every Monday night and we talked a lot about how to find your own personal gifts because when you share yourself on the internet you need to find your gifts and share your gifts with the world. So Lori, tell us some of the ways that you use to help your clients find their gifts. Oh, well, because I work with coaches, with, well, with creatives and entrepreneurs, I first want to know if I would wave a magic wand, what would they have in their life? Where would they be living? What, who would be hanging around with them? Um, or who would they you be hanging around with, basically? Um, what would be in their lives? What what things are of value for you? I mean, if if it's something like I love music and I do a lot of volunteering during the summer, is that something you'd love to do? And also, as a coach, I always ask, what would you love to do, and what's keeping you from doing that? Those are great questions. Don, do you ask similar questions when people are struggling with how to write their book or what to write about? I do, but in in a sense, most of the time they already have an idea of what they want to write about, and it's just helping them bring it out and get it to the fore that I, I help them work with. Um, but the other part of my business is helping uh, new publishing professionals get to what I can call the corner office and in in that sense I tap into a lot of my own experiences from working in the publishing industry and all the different companies that I've worked for and how you can you know network and move up the line and who you should be talking to and and what organizations you should join and and be a part of so um, it's kind of like an, an all-encompassing getting people to realize that um, as a business they really need to be involved because uh, things change at various companies and and you could be merged, you could be integrated with another company in some way and, and it's always good to be networking with people on the outside because those are the people who are going to be looking for someone later on when you need them. So. And I think networking is a, a great item that you brought up. And Lori kind of alluded to it. who do you hang out with. If you're sitting in a group of people and they're the perfect people, you're having a great time, time is flying by, who are you sitting with? What are you talking about? What are you doing? You know, so that's the type of thing that you should be thinking about. And if you're not sure what that is, you can go to meetup.com. There are a million groups that do everything. Do you love hiking? Do you love speaking a different language? Do you love cooking? Do you love helping others? Do you love volunteering? What do you love to do? What really gets your heart pumping? And who are those people you're hanging out with? And what are you talking about when you're hanging out? If you have a subject that really inspires you, put your heart on fire when you're talking about it, that's an idea about where your true gift lies what puts your heart on fire? Lori, yeah, you, you talk about passion, and that's it. If if you're so passionate about it, don't talk about it. You've got to do it. But again, there's this one thing that we all have as human beings, and I'll talk about that later. And it starts with a capital R. A capital R. R. So we're going to have to swing back to that. I don't know what that is yet. R. Any ideas, Don? I, I'm at a loss. 
I'm at a loss. I can't, I can't, I can't come up with an R right now. I it's, love. Yeah, it's the Crusher of Dreams, and I'll I'll give you a hint. And if any of you out there in Google Land Hangout Land have seen this, you will know what the capital R is. <laughs> That'll be great. I'm writing that down so I don't miss that. But you have to make sure we swing back before the end. I will. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so one of the ways I I figured out what I really wanted to do, and it's kind of like hanging out with people, but once I kind of knew what I wanted to do, how I wanted to be a helper to people, then I also started doing videos and I started doing hangouts like this, and it's amazing how things started to solidify and my why got smaller, my who I wanted to help got smaller, my gifts got more specific. And when I say smaller, I just mean the breadth of what I wanted to do got more concise and more directed. And when you're more concise and more directed, it's very helpful because now your gift is a lot more powerful. When you're trying to help everyone, you're not helping as many people as you really think you are because no one is really picking up on what's going on. Nobody is really getting into your passion because your passion is so broad it's not directed in a certain area. So I found that that really helps me a lot is directing my passion towards video and that has really helped me grow my business. Lori, what are some of the ways that have helped you grow your business helping you find your why, helping you ground yourself in your gifts? Networking would be definitely one of those things that helped me. But I do like the Google Hangouts and I am liking more to create videos. And I, okay, here's the capital R, I resisted for a long time. And resistance is the killer of dreams. I, it was one of the action steps that I got from my coach to start doing videos and then and I resisted for years but now I mean I just did 30 videos in seven days and it was all about my passion which is the hero's journey and I, I just think that for for you people out there who are just scared of, of bringing your gifts out or you don't think it's gonna help you in some way that's the only thing, like like Leslie said, if you are focused on other, so many different things, and right now I can say with having a kitchen redo and all sorts of other things in my life, uh, handling clients and all, I've got a lot of things to do. It's it's diffusing what I my focus, and I really want to focus on uh, growing my business. But right now, you know, it's it's. Uh, I have to realize I am where I am and I have to use my own um, advice and not resist it and eke out that time. But um, yeah, I think networking is really a powerful thing because when you identify with the people that you really resonate with and work with them and play with them, then it's, it's not work. It's fun. It's building your business by doing it the fun way. Awesome. And when you said resistance, the one thing that came to mind is resistance is futile, like from Star Wars and the Borg. Star Trek, I guess. That's a Star Trek line, huh? Yep, yep, yep. And resistance, really, this whole book, and I'll talk a little bit about it later, it's called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. You can Google Stephen Pressfield and Oprah or Stephen Pressfield and Marie Forleo and see some great uh, videos on him and his work, but really, you gotta you gotta break through that resistance. It's it's the right. thing that each of us face, and it's it really is the killer of dreams. So if you really want something, you you do have to. It's not going to be easy. It just isn't. I mean, you can ask for ease, and. Um, and find the way, but you know, there's no no magic pill. You just have to you have to just keep at it. Especially if you're an artist or writer, 
or a performing artist. It's just something you just have to do. You, you have to be, like you said, consistent. Very much so. So, Don, let's talk about authors and publishers and, and how resistance is affecting their ability to get their message out. Where is that resistance coming up that you see in the authoring in the author field or in the publishing field? I think it's a it's a resistance that is kind of a, a universal too. Everyone is afraid of technology. Mm -hmm. um, it, I've talked and, and I've been on t uh, table topics at um, some of the SEPA meetings where I'm trying to explain to people how doing a Google Hangout or you know building your social media footprint so that you can get your word out about your book because basically you are your book and your book is your brand and you have to build a following and a and a viral response to your book and one of the things that I say first of all is if you have a book idea and it's not published yet start a blog start a blog go to, you do empower start a blog start putting excerpts of your book on the blog see if you get a response from people get comments about your blog and that way you can gauge what kind of a um, customer base you're gonna have when you try and get this thing completed and out into the into the world if you just say well I'm gonna do a book on you know the feeding habits of oysters and put it out there and expect that it's going to be you know a big seller well yeah there might be a few people that are interested in the feeding habits of oysters and I'm sure you'll get a few sales but if you know that you've got a, a, a social media footprint that connects with a, you know a few thousand people that really are totally fans of hey we want to we want to find out about the feeding habits of oysters you're you're in it's all about just trying to do things before you get your book done to make sure that your book is going to be saleable and a hit before you spend all the money to go through and get it done and I think that's one of the pieces that um, a lot of coaches and author and you know author shepherds don't really think about is the fact that okay well maybe the subject matter is something that is is, is a niche that's so tiny that once that niche is completely saturated there's there's no available other group that's going to be interested in purchasing this book so you've got to think about all your you know okay I'm gonna do this book is it gonna be something that people are gonna be interested in and take it from there and, and if you've got something behind it that says yeah there's an interest out there that's the way to go so. yeah I think that's so true Don because two weeks ago I was speaking to a group of women and several of them wanted to write books but Hardly any of them had a video a YouTube channel that they knew how to access. They might have one YouTube video up there. They might sometimes post on social media, but maybe pictures of cats. They're not really connecting with the audience that they're trying to sell to, right? right. And, and you can do so much. If your book is going to be pub published, if it's May, let's say, and your book is almost done and you're looking to publish in August, September, October, November, what are you doing right now? Where's your videos? Your YouTube channel should be up and you should be posting a YouTube video every day. You know, so many people say, hey, does anybody know how to market a book? Well, yeah, we all know how to market a book. Get your YouTube going, get your Facebook going and use a social media expert or use a marketing expert to do those things that you don't know how to do on your own. You right. know how to put your YouTube channel up. We all know how to do a YouTube and if you don't go to YouTube University figure out how to access your YouTube channel I cannot believe the number of people who have written a book but don't have videos up the number of people who want to be speakers but they don't have a YouTube video up about what are they going to speak about and how will it benefit the people that's the first step you guys that's your resistance coming through and if you're trying to get a coach for that and you're asking for a marketing coach, you're really asking for a resistance coach because you know the steps you need to do. Or if you don't, you know now because we're telling you, get your YouTube channel set up and start posting videos. Get your Facebook up and start posting Facebook. And then talk to your tribe. Talk to the people who would be buying your book. 
and yes, a lot of people will unfriend you or whatever. That's okay because they're not the people who are going to buy from you anyway. That's right. Yeah, it, it is so true. It is amazing. So I really like that resistance angle, Lori, that you brought up because I think that is very true for so many of us because people know the answers, but they want some help getting over the answers. They ask you a different question. They don't come to you and say, hey, I need some help getting over my resistance. We as a human don't often recognize that in ourselves. We're saying, I don't know how to market my book. Well, do you have a YouTube channel? Well, no, I don't know my password. I posted something five months ago. I think you do know how to market your book. I think there's something you're fighting and that's not out there. Let's try and get over that resistance first. I think that's the first place. So that, that was a really great R word. I love that, Lori. So talk to us a little bit more about some of the things you've discovered from that book, Lori. Oh, well, I mean, I, I really liked Stephen Pressfield. And you can, you can also Google him and get on his blog. He writes every, I believe it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you'll all, you know, so you, and he, he really goes actually through the, the process of writing, which is great. But um, I, I pulled out a little bit, uh, I pulled out this one uh, page here, and it's called Resistance and Fear because basically that's what resistance is. And I'll read a little bit about it. And it says, Are you paralyzed by fear? So, you know, if, if you're in action, you may be paralyzed. That's a good sign. Fear is good. Like self-doubt, fear is an indicator. Fear tells us what we have to do. Remember our rule of thumb. The more scared we are of a work or a calling, the more sure we can be that we have to do it. Resistance is experienced as fear. The degree of fear equates to the strength of resistance, and he uses the capital R. Therefore, the more we fear we feel about a specific enterprise, the more certain we can be that that enterprise is important to us and to the growth of our soul. So, you know, if you're scared of something, like, this is, this is kind of a, a strange or funny analogy, but my brother, I just sent him an iPod Touch, because his very, very, very old little bitty um, iPod uh, shuffle died. Oh, no, he was using Windows XP, which is, that's a really, really old system software. And he was, if he could, he'd use it forever. Forever! He just, but he, had, he couldn't. He had to get a new computer. So his iPod shuffle wouldn't work with... Uh, Windows 7, he wouldn't jump to Windows 8, first off. He's, of, of resistance, he is like the um, prince, crown prince of resistance. And I love him anyway, I really do. I love my brother, but he is the most resistant person I have met on the planet so far. Anyway, <laughs> I sent him an iPod Touch, it was a couple of years old, and he was like, Lori, Lori, this is too much. This I, can't, I don't know how to, what do you do? How do I listen to music? <laughs> he had no clue about how to use it. And he's like, all I want to do is listen to music. <laughs> and finally, he did learn how to, to load music on into his iPod Touch and shuffle because he likes to walk every day. And he, he's just, he would, but... But I'll tell you, he is, his, his fear of technology keeps him stuck. And his fear of socialization keeps him stuck, too. And then he starts to project, and, and everybody, it's everybody else's fault. So, so that's like the, the biggest thing, resistance, is, is all about fear. But if it's something that you really fear, and it's not like risky fear, like if you're um, you're going to jump out of an airplane. I mean, but you, I mean, that's that's the ultimate thing. If you if you are fearing that, my my mother and my aunt they used to fear driving over tall and high and long bridges. 
They just had a fear of bridges. In fact, my aunt would, had called my um, my cousin, and she said she was at the Mississippi River, and she had to drive from Florida to Texas. She said, um, "I can't drive across the Mississippi." So my cousin had to fly to wherever my aunt was. I don't know if she was in New Orleans or Memphis or wherever she was. She, she may have been in Memphis. And my cousin had to drive my aunt across the river because he couldn't do it. It was fear. Huge fear story. It, yeah. So what's fear keeping you from? Are you, is, it, is it whatever's on the other side of that bridge? And it may be your greatest, your greatest um, achievement. So, well, and I think that is so true because I have a sister who hates public speaking. Right, doesn't like to do this kind of thing. But she was just elected to the fire board up here in a small town in Colorado, and so today she has to give a speech to everybody that she's talking to. She hates that. But she was just elected to the fire board, so she realizes that she has to overcome that fear. She's got to give this speech. People have to get to know her. The people who voted for her have to get to know her. So today she has to give a speech. And of course she was reaching out to her friends and family saying, what do I do, what do I do? But that, I think, is a great example, just like your aunt or whoever, facing your fears and doing what you know you need to do anyway, and in my sister's case, her why was big enough. She knew that she needed to do this because she got it active and involved in the community. She knew when she ran for the fire board that she would have to do this kind of thing. And running for the fire board, her why was big enough to be a part of a help to the community, to give back to the community that gave so much to her. That's her why. So it was, it was a no-brainer. She had to face the fear and she's going to have to do it. She just accepted that as a natural progression of what she decided to do. So she did it. And I think that's a great way to face your fear is realizing that whatever comes next was a progression of what you chose. Just take that step. Take those baby steps. Just keep doing it because when you know what you want to do, when your heart is truly calling you and truly singing to you, you are going to be able to do whatever it is you have to do. Don, talk to us a little bit about your experiences and your stories about writers and publishers who have been unable to take that leap, but then finally were able to overcome that fear. What fear is the biggest that you find? The, the fear of, of not finding an audience, the fear of, of, be, of almost like, <clears throat> and, and I personally, as, a, um, you know, as someone who writes as well, I, I don't really have this fear. Um, as, I, as I've said before, I, I write for me. And if other people like what I write, that's great. But as far as other authors go, they, they're looking at it like, well, you know, this is my, you know, child. This is something that I, I crafted. This is something that I, I, you know, I nurtured and I built and I put together. And if somebody doesn't like it, you know, that could be a real... Um, you know, ego blast for them that, that's, that, that they won't be able to actually absorb and, and move on from. And that's, that's something that you've really got to go, get over. One of the things that I wanted to say with, with Laurie, with the R, the other letter that I was thinking of is a P, and, and that's procrastination. Oh. Because nothing good has ever come from doing nothing. And and Vic Streishaus said this the other uh, on one of his videos, or even in a live, he said that imperfect action always beats inaction every every 100 percent of the time. If you do nothing, you know the result. If you do something, you may have to deviate and change direction somewhere in the middle, but that's okay because at least you've got the ball rolling, and things are going in the right direction. Now. You were talking about your sister, your sister-in-law's the new fire uh, on the fire board. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing a, a a series of videos detailing all of my speeches at uh, Toastmasters, and I'm posting them all on on YouTube. And I I had a fear of speaking, and one way to get rid of a fear of speaking is to 
um, be an expert in your niche and pitch yourself and tr and go out and say, okay, well, I think I can teach this course. And then actually have them say, yeah, okay, come in and teach this course. And, and never having any public speaking training whatsoever, walk into a lecture hall of 98 students staring at you that want to know about publishing. And <clears throat> that was the wake-up call for me, that number one, yeah, I can do this because I did it without any training whatsoever. But number two, it always helps to walk into a situation where you're going to be in front of people who've been speaking for a long time and can give you a critique and help you and and it's it's a very inclusive family or like a family that they we all want each other to excel as at what we're doing and how we're speaking and it's great to see other people in in my toastmasters group as they progress you know through the different uh, manuals that we're working on and and how people go from when they first walk in to like months into it and and they're so much better I mean, and now, another thing, I have a music background. You know, way back in the mist and the fog when I was in high school, I was a really, really good trumpet player. And I made all-county, because we, you know, we had that in New York, I made all-county band, and, and I used to love to be in front of an audience and just play. And, and I don't do that anymore. I don't have that, that adrenaline rush of like, hey... You know, this is where I can go out and be in front of an audience and, and get, get that energy feed from people that are, like, you know, liking what I'm doing. Now, I find that I'm getting the same rush from public speaking in front of my group. And it's, like, and I'm doing all the videos. I started doing videos back in September of last year. Just because doing videos on YouTube, YouTube is, like, the third largest... Um, uh, social media site where people it, it, where Google finds it so if you do a video you know it's gonna show up on Google eventually if you're doing a lot of videos and you'll that's where you're gonna make your footprint so you know I think what what it comes down to is number one if a professor or a teacher or someone in your past has said hey you know you're a really good you know uh, speaker, singer, um, writer, tap into that. You know, I mean, and personally, I have an experience where one of my professors when I was in college was a really prestigious professor. His name was Kelsey Harder. And um, he wanted me to go into creative writing. And, I, you know, I had no idea what I was sitting on, you know, what was in my head. Um, <clears throat> I'm very creative. I'm, I have a great imagination, but I was like, "Hey, you know, uh, you know, I, I, my professor wants me to go into creative writing, but I'm all channeled into this whole history thing." And what eventually ended up happening was, now that the internet is here and we can blog and get our word out, and I'm using it as my channel to do creative writing. Um, <clears throat> Whether, whether it gets a lot of views or not, and, and, and some people seem to like what I'm putting out there, that's, it, it's kind of feeding my own ability and need to tap into one of my gifts. So, Yeah, and I think you said something that's one of our tips going forward is what do others tell you that you're good at? If you're not sure yet what your gift is, what have your friends and your family said, hey, you're great at that at? What do you, your friends and family come to you for advice for? Why are you the go-to person? That's another of the tips that we have to find out what your gifts are for the world. Why do people come to you? You're known for something. People come to you for some reason. What is that? And is that your gift or part of your gift to the world? People always come to you for fill in the blank. And spend a little time journaling or thinking about this type of question. Why do people come to me for advice and guidance? What questions do people ask me? What is the subject matter that they're asking me about? Where do they come to me? Like is it at work? Is it at home? Is it at the park when I'm playing ball? What is it? Find out your gifts by really thinking about why people come to you. 
that's a little tip that Lori and I were talking earlier before the hangout came up, and I thought that was a great tip that she stumbled upon. People always will be telling you what your gifts are by asking you to share them with them. They come to you as the go-to person for whatever it is. So Lori, expand on that a little bit. I loved when you mentioned that this morning. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny because I was, you know, I, 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 love, I love cooking. I love cooking. And um, I love entertaining, too. But right now, my, I don't even have a kitchen. It's totally gutted. So I went out and had some breakfast yesterday. There's a place called the Walnut Cafe. Um, there's a little, the super mini Walnut Cafe that's in Lafayette. So I went ahead there, and I um, sat next to two people, and one of them was pretty animated and, and fun to, and, you know, I, it was hard not to listen because I was only about um, two feet away from them. And he was talking all about uh, cooking and because he's a chef. And the thing is, is he loves being a chef. And that's, um, and I, I was listening to him and he's looking for all different ways to expand his, his um, business because it sounded like he could be busier. And um, he mentioned a website called, oh, I forgot what it is, but I, I uh, Googled it while I was sitting there with my phone, and I found out. And it's this website where you can eat at other people's homes, like all over the world. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, it's, it's like um, Eden or something like that, Eden.com or something. I have to look and see. But I thought, wow, that is a really great, great idea. Like for you know, forty dollars a person, you can invite people over and and serve them, and you can you can have like a regular um, weekly thing that you did, and you, you can have people if you have a large enough place, and and you can enjoy doing something you love just by putting yourself up there. I mean, some people. I, I know that when I was married, my husband then and I talked about having a bed and breakfast. And he went as far as to talk to, call an author who got a book um, about how you start having a bed and breakfast. And um, he called the author and talked with her, and she lived someplace in New York. And, um, you know, but, you know, now with the internet, we have Airbnb. So, Dot com and I've stayed in a few Airbnb.com places because it was inexpensive. It was close by to where I needed to be, and one of the places were well, not so great. <laughs> it was not so great, and I and you can give reviews, but you know if you wanted to have a, a bed and breakfast and you have a spare bedroom, you can start little doing something like that. I mean. It's something of passion, though. I mean, it's you know, if it's all about the money, then there's an energy of desperation. So, so that's one thing that I think that people need to consider when they're diving into things and when they resist diving into things because artists, especially, don't believe that they can make money doing what they love and. Um, I loved when Don said something about procrastination because everything is covered in this book, The War of Art, and when, one of the things that um, Stephen Pressfield says is procrastination is the most common manifestation of resistance because it's the easiest to rationalize. We don't tell ourselves, I'm not going to write my symphony. Instead, we say, I'm going to write my symphony. I'm just going to write it tomorrow. And then the other thing he says is the most pernicious aspect of procrastination is that it can become a habit. We don't just put off our lives today. We put them off until our deathbed. So I always remember the saying that Wayne Dyer says, don't, um, don't die with the music in you. That's a great quote. And, and it's very true, too, because when I go out and I speak, I almost always leave with a challenge to that group of people that I'm speaking to. So a couple weeks ago, it was a video challenge. 
put up a two-minute video by midnight tonight. There was a group of 10 people in the room. Only one person got it done. Now it's a week later, maybe 10 days later now, three of the 10 people have done it in 10 days. Three. So if you want people to listen to you, if you want to share your gifts with the world, put up a video tonight. If you're listening, put up a video tonight and then email us and let us know that you put up a two-minute video today. Yes, you're going to have technical challenges. You might not know your YouTube access channel, right? You might not remember your YouTube um, password. Okay, that's part of getting it up tonight. You better plan for that. The very first time you put up a two-minute video, it's going to take you forever. It just does, right? Now I can put up a two-minute video and market it and write my blog associated with it and everything. In about 30 minutes, I can do everything I need to do associated with the two-minute video. So I start with the two-minute video and then do a blog associated with it and then market it and then write an email about it to my group. All of that I can get done in 30 minutes now. But the very first time I put up my very first YouTube video probably took me an hour and a half to do a short little stupid video. But why in a group of 10 people did only three people do it? Those three people are following their passion. And the one who did it the same day, that's the person that's going to make a difference. A year from now, that person is going to be a rock star in their business. And the people well, who still haven't put up the video, probably their lives aren't going to change a lot. Go ahead, Don. Well, Leslie, that kind of follows the form with uh, the old um, comedy bit that Jerry Seinfeld said that you know, four out of five people at a funeral would would rather be in the box than the one giving the eulogy. So, you know, that's that's how deeply ingrained in people it is that they don't want to get up in public speak. And I I don't know what the fear factor is. Like I, I I guess I do. It's rejection. Or it's the fact that you'll get up there and you'll you'll like kind of bumble through and, and you'll know that you did a bad job. It's like anything else, practice. You have to practice. You have to practice to be a good trumpet player. You have to practice to be a good guitar player. You have to practice to, to, to be a good writer. And, you know, I mean, like I said, I started this week. Jim Edwards, who I watch his webinars every week on Wednesday, he said, take an egg timer and set it for 20 to 25 minutes and just write. Just write every day. And that's another Seinfeldism, too, because... Jerry Seinfeld said, if you're going to do comedy, you have to come up with bits and do it every single day. You have to do something with comedy every single day. And if you're going to be a writer or you're going to be an author or you're going to do something that's going to be uh, get content out on the Internet, you have to be doing it every single day to get better at it in the long run. And that is so true. And we all speak to that kind of audience, right? We all talk to authors, coaches coaches, creative speakers, that's who should be probably listening to that is people who want to make a difference. Those are the people we resonate with, right? Right. If you're one of those people and you're not doing a YouTube video every day or writing a blog every day, you need to reassess your commitment because if you can't find 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes a day to use to dedicate and grow your business, if you're not committed to that, then you're not really committed to growing your business. Where's your resistance? What's wrong? Because, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Lori. Uh, what I was going to tag on to, Dawn, is that, you know, the fear is not, it, it is fear of rejection, but it goes deeper than that. It's the fear of, am I good enough? I'm not good enough. No one will like it. You know, I won't be heard and I won't be seen. And that, those things actually are attached to childhood issues. Um, and I'm not going to go into psychological psychobabble or anything like that, but a coach can let you know what those are because they will go through a process with you. I go through the process through um, shadow work because really those things that in, even early in life that um, stunted us will still stunt us later on as we are older. But, but that's the whole thing about resistance. 
it's like I say, it's the killer of dreams. And until we are willing to address it, and like Don said, and like you said, practice. I mean, nobody gets good at anything just by saying, I'm going to do this. I mean, it takes practice. It takes practice to learn whatever software. It takes practice to figure out how to handle a camera if you're going to do a video. And, you know, it takes practice for me with this, you know, with Google Hangouts because <laughs> I'm still learning myself. Um, and I had, um, I had a little practice session with somebody I'm working with. And we had a lot of fun. And I might do a little Google Hangout with um, maybe with you and some other folks on, on just the creativity of, of Google Hangout. And and don't be scared. You know, it's, I mean, it, you don't, you know, what is the worst thing that could happen? I mean, so you, you are goofy. Or, you, you know, but, but so what? You did it. And the thing about doing something is you feel exhilarated by the challenge. And like the seven days of 30 videos, oh my gosh, that's a lot, you know? It's, it's crazy. So, yeah. Um, but do it. Just do it. I mean, you just asked for one video, one two-minute video from, right, from people. Was it 30 people, did you say? There were 10 in the room that day. Ten, so. ten. So, so it was 30% who did it, finally. But that one gal, and I did see her video. <laughs> Don liked her video, too. Yes. Was, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> so so that's that interesting. <laughs> when she did a video, you know that she is a rock star. Because when she did her video and we watched it, we're like, oh, my God. Because she laid down a challenge. That oh, yes. You know, yeah, there's no fear. It was awesome, though. It was awesome. Yeah. So that's what we're going to tell you to do. You know, get in touch with your fun side, too. Let's do something fun. Do it. If you're going to be a rock star, just do it. And as you do it, if you do it every day, if you do it consistently, Joe Saba, who is a speaker here in Denver, has a great saying. You don't have to be good to start. You just have to be, start to be good. And as you do it, that feedback will help you hone in. In the past six months, my life has changed dramatically because I've changed what I've done. Everybody who does this consistently changes, and then they hone in on their true gifts, their true gifts to the world, and it's not so hard anymore. I'm playing with the Google stuff. <laughs> sound, sound effects? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sound effects. <laughs> the, the other thing to think about, too, when you do this is that you're, you're actually um, – compiling a, a, a content base that is never going to disappear. Once you have Google, once you, I mean, once you have a Google Hangout done or you have your videos done, that's content that can be a, you know, a, a, a residual cash stream in some way, shape, or form sometime in the future. Um, like what I'm doing with my, my videos now is um, I run them to, through Camtasia and turn them into podcasts. So I've got all of my videos that I've ever done as MP3s now so that somebody can like if they want to load them to their, you know, there it is, Laurie, the iPad mini. <laughs> um, they, can, they can then listen to it in their, in their car. Actually, you know what's funny about this? I had the original mini, was, which was the long one, and they um, recalled it. And I loved my mini because it was the first, you know, iPod that I got. <laughs> and uh, they recalled it because it, I don't know what happened, but and they sent me this square, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, I, I, I'm not real impressed with this one, but I have the the big iPod, the the four gig, whatever it is, eighty gig, whatever it is. So, but um, yeah, you can. It's it's all content. You're making content, and you're also building a, a web presence that's going to be found by Google as you're doing this. And that's what it's all about, is building so that your search engine optimization is going to make it so that you're out in front on the first page of Google when people look for, you know, if you go and Google the book, book Kahuna, it's all my stuff. You know, not, not that there's that many people out there called the book Kahuna, because there aren't, but, and there would be a trademark infringement if there was, but, um, 
but yeah, if you if you go and look for you know, it's all like a lot of different publishing things, and it's all it'll all come up on Google, and that's what you want to do. Right, right. So get your stuff out there. Don't sit there and do nothing. If you think you have a dream to share, get out there. And I would invite you to join with either Don or Lori or I. Can you guys see my halo? Because I'm a little <laughs> angel, right? <laughs> well, that's one of the effects you can use. But I invite you to join with one of us. If you're looking to fulfill your dreams, we all have decided that the blogging platform with Empower Network is a great place to start. And that's how we connected, actually, is through this blogging platform. And it's really kind of funny that we all live in the Denver metro area because we might have met each other once. In fact, Lori and I, I think, might have only met each other in Miami. I'm not sure if we've even met each other in Denver at all. But our relationship came from the Empower Network. We're all playing with this now. So find your fun <laughs> side. Put it out there and join with us. You want to start your business? Then my advice to you is start today. We're going to have our links below, and I want you to join with one of us today. If you're going to put your gifts out there, you want to find your gifts for $25 a month. You can start a blogging platform that is so easy. I have one of my one of my good friends is Barbara Bowden, and she does a blog called Grandma's Can Blog. And she's as old as my mom, maybe a little bit older, and she is overcoming the technology challenge. Even Grandma's Can Blog is what she says. And nothing will stop this woman from getting through what she needs. So if you don't know how to blog yet, don't worry. We'll help you start a blog, start a YouTube channel, blog daily, YouTube daily, and then work with us. We'll help you get off the dime. We'll help push you through that resistance. We'll give you challenges. We'll give you help and assistance because you need to do it and you need to start today. Right now, not in an hour, not in a few minutes. Go to our link below. If you're live, we're not. our links aren't there yet, but they'll be there in about an hour. But if our links are there, join us right now. If they're not there, come back in an hour. They'll be there. Join us today and start sharing your gifts with the world. And then as you share it on a daily basis, you'll hone it in. You'll get better. Your tribe will start following you. But if you've got nothing out there on YouTube, if you've got no blog that people can go to get to know you, Nobody's going to join you. People are not going to buy your book if you don't have a YouTube channel talking about it, if you don't have a blog talking about it. And the great thing about using the Empower Network is that when we blog, then we also have a product to sell. So it creates this passive income for us. At $50 a month instead of just $25, you can become an affiliate, and then you can sell the Empower Network tools and products as well you can sell whatever products you have, and you can blog about your book. You can blog about cooking. You can blog about donuts. You can blog about your cat. It doesn't matter what you're blogging about. Blog about your passion. People will find you if you put data out there, and then they will be interested in you. They'll start buying things from you. If you don't have your own products, you can join with us and sell Empower Network products, and you can make money online. But if you're not out there, if you're not putting videos out there, if you're not willing to do the work, you're not going to make a thin dime. You have to be willing to do it. Oh, I love Don. Look at Don's face. I know. I know. It's real fun. I, I, this, is, this is an homage to my corgi. Uh, I'm, I'm loyal, and I'm also, I could be your best friend. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Don, tell me, what has the Empower Network done for you? You joined just a couple months ago, right? Maybe two or three months now. How has the Empower Network helped you to grow your business, your publishing and author business? Well, it's it's heavily helping me to get my word out. And the fact that it's a community and there's a very um, intense camaraderie between all the people, and it, that's that's what I'm really um, der deriving from everything right now and that the product from Vic the, the marketing product uh, I mean I've, I've actually kinda of let up on going through things but um, 
that product is amazing as far as what it can help you do in in marketing and growing your email list and getting leads and 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 just making sure that your traffic is is converting and you're getting people in so there's so many different aspects to being part of empower that are helping me it's hard to really just say well this is the one thing or this is the other thing but the whole team have it all approach you know i like avram and nikki a lot and uh... you know that's that there are team uh... founders and um... and just making friends through facebook with people like you know on the other side of the planet like uh... you know i i get little messages from what is it kinda holson wang who's over in uh... norway all the time and you know so it's a it's a very um just a, a feeling of family and, and, and we're all there in it together and we're all you know gonna help you get your uh, blogging and, and everything up to speed so that you won't fall behind. Right. Lori, tell us the the one or two things that it's helped you with in the time that you've been live. Well it's definitely helped me in creating more videos and also getting more focus on what I am uh, I'm really passionate about. So um, I'm really passionate about everybody being on the hero's journey. And I know everybody is every day on the hero's journey. We never quite know what's going to happen. I mean, we can put out the intention of really great things happening every day. But then there, there are unseen forces that happen, and there are challenges we always go through. So basically, we get to separate from the world. Um, onto the call of adventure and then we get the initiation where it is we are challenged to prove ourselves in some way or, or, or learn our gifts. That the initiation part is really about learning those gifts and then in the return is bringing those gifts back to the tribe and seeing how this can help other people in the world. So this is really important for people to really go for what they want. I mean, you may have to keep your day job. That's, that's all there is to it. But what could you do in your day job that will make it fun, that will make it more, um, not, I don't even want to say tolerable, because you know, you know, you are doing what you're doing, and it's all a choice. But what will make it expansive? What will make it so much fun that you can't help but go ahead and do this thing? And um, you can actually evolve your whatever job you're in doing that. I mean, here we are, we're doing this hangout. Now we've got these little crazy things, and, and you know, we can do fun things like, you know, <laughs> or, you know, maybe nobody's watching and it's like, <laughs> no, but but you know, have fun with life. I mean, life isn't you know. I think Helen Keller said, "Life is a daring adventure or nothing." So um, get out there and blog. I think blogging is hugely helpful for me. It helps me sort my ideas out, and it helps me focus. And you know, it, we will put a disclaimer, you know, an a, a income disclaimer because you can make a uh, an income on uh, the Empower Network. And uh, the thing is, is every single product they come out with has a lot of thought and a lot of integrity. If you're really into personal development, this is the place you want to be. And it's it's really, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it's really um, aided me in a lot of my own personal development, and it continues to do so. So, I love it. And how about you? Well, I think that's great. So, <clears throat> for me, I found the Empower Network. If you followed my story, I've told this part a little bit before, right? So, I knew I went through a messy divorce. I spent time in the hospital with my mom. My mom was having kidney failure, and I was in the hospital with her. I had children at home I had to feed. I had a job where my butt needed to be in the seat. And I was stressed to the max. I didn't know how to care for my mom and my children while keeping a full-time job. So when Lori talks about something that allows you to keep your job and 
build that income on the side, this is it. This is how I started doing it. My mom, thankfully, went on dialysis and she got better naturally, so I didn't have to worry about that anymore. But it took me years before I was ready to step out and become a speak speaker and a coach and an author. And then when I did, I started my journey to say, okay, how do I market myself? And that's when the Empower Network fell into my lap. When I knew what I wanted to do, speak and be an author and be a coach, then I knew I had to blog. And when I looked at all the different blogging platforms, some of them are free, and free I say in quotes, right? Because anything that's free costs you time or money or energy. Empower Network does have a $25 a month fee. But oh my God, it is so easy. It's like writing a Word document, hitting a button and bang, it's done. I can blog in the car. If you follow me at all, you see that I do a lot of blogs in the car. When I was sitting waiting for the, um, the, the car emissions, we were sitting there for three hours. We blogged while we were in the car. So you can blog anywhere while you're sitting, waiting in line, that kind of thing. So we have built into our family a way to build a business no matter where we are. And I think that is powerful. And I am teaching my boys. I have two boys that are either on their way to college or should be on their way to college in a week. I'm giving them an opportunity to build their own business as well. I'm giving my 15-year-old son and his friend the ability to blog and create a music channel for themselves so that they can deal with free expression as well and figure out the entrepreneurial side of life, right? I'm teaching them how to be employees because so many of us are, but the gift I'm giving to my children by being a work, working mom and entrepreneur entrepreneurial mom, I'm teaching them how to build their own business too. So if you're a mom or if you have friends, if you want to make a difference in the world, teach others how to build their own businesses so that when they're sitting in the hospital room with their mother, they're not worried how they're going to pay their bills. They know they've got money coming in, passive income is what we call it, coming in from other resources and that's what we help you do here with the Empower Network, with blogging, with video blogging. Blogging on video is called vlogging, V-L-O-G-G-I-N-G. So that's what we will teach you how to do. That's where we're going to lead you because that is the path to get your word out, to have people join you, to create massive movement in the world. People have to know what you stand for and where you come from. And this, my friends, is the best place I've found. It's the best place Lori's found. It's the best place Dawn has found. So join with one of us. Do it today. Do it for yourself. Do it today. Join our link below and then start your first blog. A two minute video today. Get it posted and then tell us that you did it. Throw down your own challenge like Carly did. I'll put Carly's link below because it was a great challenge. Um, <laughs> throw down your own challenge and move your business forward today. Any I'm, thinking, I'm going to take Carly's challenge too. Are right? you? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Any last minute words to the wise? Well, you know, my my uh, situation is a little different because, you know, I've worked in publishing for like the last 30 years and and you know, when you're actually told, you know, this is the end of the line, it's time to start something else. So, it helps if you if you've all, all, you're out of the workforce as well, you know, Empower Network can be a, a a great tool to use to either you know launch yourself back into the workforce because you can say, well, look look what I've been doing. Here are all my blog posts for the last six months or five months on my particular niche topic that you work in. Mm -hmm. So it it could be something like that as well. Great, Lori. Parting words. Well, I, I really feel like if you are in resistance, you are in a good place, my friend, because you are scratching the surface at your gift. And I pulled this out from the web, and I think it was on one of Oprah's um, sites, and it said, a gift isn't the province of the exceptionally talented, the successful, or blessed. Quite the contrary, everyone has a gift. Some gifts are a thousand watt bulbs of light. Others are hidden in the stone. All are there waiting to be revealed. So 
it's time, my friends. This is your time. And it's really important you know that because this isn't a dress rehearsal. It's time. It's time that you bring your gifts to the world and share with others and bring it to the tribe so we can all survive, thrive, and, and not only stay alive, but just be excited about life. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. If you're here, we really applaud you for moving your life forward, and we will see you on next week's Saturday Sanctuary. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. -bye.